The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on this. I should have thought of it before I said it on this fourth day of April. Wow. Wrote it a number of times, just forgot what it was. Uh, Dow's up 11 at 20,662. SP's down four and a half at 2354. The comp index is at this particular moment down five at 5889. Gold is up five at twelve fifty nine. Um, this is going to be very interesting. High grade copper is in the two sixty one area. It's up seventy cents. Going to be watching that quite closely. Crude oil is up forty cents at fifty point sixty four. Bonds. That's going to be very interesting because it's up. Uh, let's see the uh, U.S. M seven at one hundred fifty one and thirty thirty seconds. Up five ticks. And you've got the dollar. Where is the dollar? It was up earlier on. It should be up right now. And the dollar is up two cents at 100.44. What a fascinating market. Absolutely. Um, the whole aspect of rotational corrections, I think, is still unfolding here. Yeah, look at this. You're looking at the E-mini. At 2397.25 on the 1st of, of March, it bounces sharply to the upside, makes a new all-time high. And then it makes a series of lower lows and lower highs. And over the last two days has had incredible um, weakness early on. And a bounce has occurred. And then it gives back. So I'm still of the opinion that a sell mode is in place in the in the daily Dow S P E minis. Um, the weekly chart, I've had to put a, a, a down arrow for a number of reasons. Technically, that should signal a sell mode, but I always start of a, a little cautiously. I'm calling it a sell signal. I need to see a Friday close below the nine period exponential moving average to really be convinced that that is a down arrow of, of, of importance to make it a sell mode. And that means it really needs to, the S&P E-mini needs to close under 2340. That's number one. Number two is when I'm looking, let me just run this now. So here's the Dow. And it's got... It needs its leg five down in the Chapman wave. It's made a B. There's not yet a B minus in an arch formation. So far, a nice action today. Starts off real uh, weak and comes back. It's up 21. Um, there's rotation going on. So there's just enough stocks to push the, to push the market a little higher um, to overcome any selling pressure. But you need to be taking, by the next two days, you need to be taking out the 20,517 low of yesterday and then you can start to see a target of the 20,412 level to go under it for leg D. At the same time, that leg D will be a five, Chapman Way five. Okay. Where would I be wrong? I'd be wrong if this trend line right here is taken out, and that would say that 20,820s. Dow trades in the 20,820s, and then I would not be surprised if I have to change my opinion to say the weekly uh, might still be in a sell signal. But it hasn't gone to a sell mode. And in fact, that the daily is acting very well. And it's more sideways, choppy, slightly lower lows, slightly lower highs that we're seeing. And that could uh, be ameliorated by a big move up from here. But that would have to be 130 points or something from here. So let's continue. And what we're looking at is um, within the S&P. What you will see, it's the same thing. The S&P actually is a little bit weaker in the daily, but the, the, the weekly chart is still, I, I've actually just kept the plus sign at the top and not a down arrow. Um, it has an, just enough of a different, uh, how can I call it? The connotations of the patterns, slightly different, just a slightly more positive rather than negative. Uh, even though we are short the down, we are short the S&P for my subscribers in my opening call. Now, let's just get rid of that and get rid of that. I don't know what it's from. Okay. Now, 
looking at the 120 minute chart, if I can just go back for one second to the E mini, look, the E mini had a peak D at the top, that was a Chapman Wave 5, had a really sharp pullback from the 2367 uh, area down to the low of 2340, uh, 2339, and now it's bounced quite strongly. And it's formed a kind of a rectangle. What I usually do is as the rectangle starts to give me more information, I narrow the rectangle so that we're not looking at the large one. And that just says simply that a, a push doesn't have to be a close, just a push over 2357.50. That was the five o'clock um, on the first. That was the high of that rally, um, <clears throat> which would say to me, that that would be a very positive aspect. And a pullback under today's low of 23.51, no, sorry, 23.44.75, would say, nah, nah, nah. It's not ready. Uh, ready for prime time. It's making another arch formation. It's going to be going lower. So let me just get out of this here, and I want to show you the QQQ series, which um, I thought I'd done. Oh, I did do that, and then I, I lost my data yesterday because I had a... An electronic malfunction, I guess you could call it. Um, so that shut down when it shuts down quickly, it just takes away the notation that I had recently done. It's not automatic. I do it. There are. That made a peak F. A peak F in the 120 minute chart of the QQQ series had a sharp pullback. I would not be surprised if the upside now is very limited, which takes me to a question many people have been asking. I'm going to move this 120 minute chart down here, and I'm going to show you something very fascinating. Look, Amazon, the king. The Amazon is just creaming all the retailers. I mean, look at look at this. Uh, Ralph Lauren, uh, note in the paper today, Ralph Lauren's closing its, is it Fifth Avenue? I mean, it's a premier store. They're closing it. Um, Macy's, look at this. Tanks, I had a question today about, it. yeah, because it's got that arch formation. It is being decimated. I, I you know, I, I keep mentioning this. Um, I meet with a good friend periodically every year we meet a few times a year just meet and just chat uh, and he's in business and he's really a, a really fine business businessman um and he he went to school with a lot of these people went to school with you know the heads of many of these companies uh, over i think it was the harvard business school all right so and he's always telling me how fantastic I'm trying to think of his name. The guy from Macy's is, and 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 he's just he's done everything right and all that. And all of a sudden comes July of 2015, and Macy's is trading at 73.61, but it has a little problem because it's now trading at 28. And part of that problem, you can say, oh, Amazon this, Amazon that. No, I think it's the whole retail sector. I think that the competition. Yeah, I always talk about this. I think that we are in a deflationary period for things. Oh, you can choose to buy a BMW or whatever you want, a Tesla, whatever you want, but you could also get fantastic value for 33000 or even for $28,000 uh, for, for a car. So that's the choice that people are making. And I'm going to go to Paul's question about debt. But let's do a couple of things. Just as we're about to go out, um, Chris asked me about, uh, we had a, a two-trin reading yesterday. Would you please comment during today's radio session. Thanks for what you do. Your student in Chicago, Chris. Chris, we'll talk about that in a moment. In fact, we've just had it accomplished exactly what it's supposed to do. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 17. This is down 3. I'll be right back. If you're looking to unearth a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new market-safe core commodity CD from EverBank. This five-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to four equally weighted commodities, gold, copper, WTI oil, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With no pricing caps, you can potentially earn an unlimited upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across semi-annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There's no annual percent yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. With certain commodities on the rebound, now is the time to take advantage. The March 23rd funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. 
Once more, that's 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Folks, we're back. So what I want you to just follow up on is see, so Mason is down 84 cents at 28.80. And look at this chart here. It just says that it's going to struggle to, to double from 28 to the 52 level, 56 level. I don't know what it's going to do. I mean, it's a great store. Uh, they, they have great stores. Um, it's tough. It is really tough out there. And what I want you to say is that I think that competition for goods, when you've got an, uh, uh, an increasingly large middle class population throughout the world in every country, that doesn't mean to say that there's not poverty. I'm just saying that the middle class, because of wages and because of goods, the sale of goods, has really benefited a lot of people. Um, that's pushing prices down. So the competition for the same article from a different from India, from China, from Taiwan, you know, just you can keep going all the way through, um, pushes prices down to a certain extent, um, especially when it comes to the discretionary type of things. Okay, now let's just get out of that. So the sum of it is that if you want to get a Tesla which is trading up 424, 302. It is your choice to spend that money. There's a certain sexiness that goes with it. There's a certain cachet. There's a certain um, desire to, to want something that has a status to it. And that's really what we're talking about. Are you telling me that they aren't equally as good cars? Maybe yes, maybe no. But it is a fantastic car. It's an electric. It goes, I mean, zero to, to 60 in no time at all. It has, it has things that people want. So that's my point here, that this is an era of how to spend discretionary income. It's an era for some people that just income alone isn't enough. It is incredibly difficult to, to, to just make out every month. And which leads me now to the reason why I'm talking about it is I'm going to talk about uh, the, the question I had about the, the trend gauge in a moment. But I wanted to go to Paul's question here. And he says, what is the significance of margin debt being at record levels? The last time it was this high was 2008. What do you think? Can you talk about this on your show today? 
Uh, you need to look at the chart of margin debt and the market. It's amazing. So, um, Paul, you're going to send me uh, some charts. Uh, send them to me. I'd like to look at them. I have other charts that I'm looking at. I'll tell you what I'm interested in. I'm interested in not so much the margin of debt being at record levels, the ability to pay for it. That goes together with the amount of, mm -hmm, how do I put this? It's not just the debt, it is the amount of leverage. And I believe that, the, I, I, don't, I haven't seen statistics yet, I'm going to try to look for it. I won't have time, at least for the next week, but I will be looking for it. I don't think there's a rush to look for it, but I will be trying to find it. And that leverage, I think, is going to be a sign from the millennials that they are now putting themselves at risk by doing something that I spoke about back for my for for my for my um, clients back in the 1980s. I talked about I spoke about banks starting something new, which was the leverage of your house to be able to use it. They called it real credit. In other words. Um, using your house as collateral. Of course, today we know that that's just a really big thing. But it's not just using your house as collateral, it's how it's used. And I, I did that for a period. Um, it just seemed an easy thing to do. And the next thing I said to myself was, wow, I just used up four bricks of my house to do whatever it was. And I just said immediately, that is it, we're done. We're not doing this again. Um, and that and that was very important because during the 2000 crash, I'm sure that I would have somehow or other leveraged my house, and I'm, a lot of people did, and that would have been a tragic thing if the market had collapsed as it did, and I was still using leverage. And and if I was wrong, thank God, I, in 2000 uh, we, we we were looking at the uh, major sell side, but hey, these things happen. So I wanted to talk about that, Paul. I'm not going to think it's an important thing for now, but this year, sometime in 2017, when the millennials, when we get the reading that the millennials have started to go into the stock market, and perhaps they're starting to use the leverage of the houses that, that they've been overpaying for, that's when we will do it. So right now, keep it in mind, it's really important. It goes together with debt and all sorts of other things. Let's go back now to Chris's question. And she wanted to know, where was it? All right, about the trend gauge. So yesterday, we had a high reading in the, in the Richard Arms trend gauge. Uh, he calls it the short-term trading index. I call it my Chapman Wave trend gauge. Why? <clears throat> I only use numbers. I don't use the gauge at all. I don't even know. I, I, whenever I've heard uh, Richard Arms talking about it, I seem to have disagreed with what he's saying. So I don't use me as an example. Um, all I can say is that I used numbers, certain numbers, and if those numbers click in, it flashes a yellow light and it says, in this case, if it's on the high side, it says that within one to two sessions, we should be a, see a 9 to 11 point E-mini futures rally, which should impact the cash indices positively. I said there's a possibility we might have seen it intraday yesterday because we had that huge rally. Then this morning we saw the sharp pullback. And now what have we done? Let's go back to this reading that I had right here. This is now leg B in the E-mini two-minute chart, 10-minute chart, I'm sorry, the 10-minute chart, leg B. And we've certainly gone from a low today of 2,344.75 to 2,354, I would say 20 points is definitely the reading that we were looking for. Now the Dow's up 36 and the S&P is just about unchanged. So that's uh, that's what we're looking at here. And that's part of what I'm talking about in terms of the rotational aspect. Now, let's just go back to our story. And the question, next question was, Bob, let me just see. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Bob wants you to know, uh, is that the next one in line? Yeah. So, Chris, we've already had the reading, we've already had the success, and what happens with that is that once it's used up, the, the trend goes back to what it was before. That's what we saw earlier when the, uh, there was a sharp rally and then a sharp pullback. Now it's kind of, this is the new day that's begun. Dow's up 41, S&P is unchanged. So we'll see how much uh, energy there is left. And until Amazon really cracks and the, and the stocks that are making all-time highs really start to crack, 
Uh, Amazon right now is trading at, what is this, AMZN is trading, keep hitting the wrong thing, AMZN. Yep, all-time high, 900.52, um, 901 round number high so far. Well, the day's young, 901. Let's see if it holds, if it pulls back from 901. Let's see with the 120-minute uh, chart. Let's go to a 10-minute chart on what am I looking at, Amazon? Amazon. Okay, let's look at this. Move it over. Yeah, we go. Amazon is this is this is A B C D E. Maybe it's an F. Well, we'll see. Got a hundred nine hundred and one. I don't think that. I think it's just too easy right now to push through a nine hundred and one. But if it does become the round number high of the day, that's a tip off to say watch out tomorrow. So Bob wants to know about the Sox index. SMH. The Sox index right now is down 31 cents to 79.21. Um, what I'm looking at here is the, uh, we'll talk about it. We've got a break coming up. Let's look at it as soon as we get back. We'll also look at Intel and we'll look at Micron. I'll be right back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Trapp. And let me just show you something here. This is the two-minute chart of the E-mini. Uh, it went to a peak D, pulls back, goes to another peak D, and is pulling back. What's the object of a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology? So recall that we want four higher peaks, the look of the Chapman Wave buy mode. You identify the lowest, most obvious low bar, merely count each successively higher peak. 
peak D, the fourth highest peak where other things can happen. Can go higher, can go lower, but that's where the yellow light flashes. And look what we got. Peak D was the deepest correction we've had there. And now we're at peak D. Let's see what happens because the market definitely is trying to go on a, some kind of strength. We'll just see exactly what goes on. Um, most importantly, what we're looking at here is the level of 2351 will be key support. On the short, very near term, that's on the two minute chart, and 23.57 starts to break to the upside. Let's see what happens. Now, um, so, question about the semiconductor index. Look, Intel, peak D, pulling back. MU, which is Micron, peak D, pulling back. Peak E in the uh, weekly chart, but nothing yet negative. Uh, <clears throat> advanced micro devices. I spent a lot of time talking about this recently. Um, Talking about how advanced micro, every ever since I can recall the 1970s, in fact, Sanders was the chairman then. I don't know who's chairman now. Um, it would have this incredible move. Once you identify it, you could just sit there and it'll keep going. But once it makes its top, you've got to be careful because it could pull back really sharply. And this is it. Now it's going sideways and not pulling back, just using up time. And uh, advanced micro at 14.38 down 27 cents is in this rectangle formation after this flag pattern. Flag pattern, flag pole at peak F to the high of 1555 on the 28th, and then a pullback to 1238. Um, and now it's in the middle of the range. Let's see what happens. Holding quite well, actually, but not showing <clears throat> real signs of technical strength in the daily. Weekly is still holding pretty well. So when I go to the SMHs, uh, we happen to be short via another vehicle. It's trading at 30, minus 39 cents at 79.13. We did have two attempts at shorting uh, the SMHs. I was going to do that again today. I decided, you know what, we've got our position. Let's just stay there. Um, it looks to me like I'm going to draw it in right now. I can do that because it had the series of tops going to that 80 level, and it couldn't break out. And that says to me, maybe it pulls back. And if it pulls back, what to watch for is this low right here on the 21st at 77.80. So the answer to the question um, here is, I believe that the semiconductor index is making some kind of a short-term top in the daily. It'll become a sell. Everything about the technical suggests that this is, in fact, starting a sell signal. We're very close to a sell mode, but I'm just going to hold off, let the day play out. I will tell you this, that at 70, uh, under 78 in the next week, SMHs, the semiconductor ETF, gives me a sell a mode in the daily, and then under 77.84, a close under that will be the first time the semis have closed under the nine period exponential moving average since it did that once back the week of the 4th of November in the 68 area. But once it broke out on the, the week of July the 1st, broke out from the 53 lows to the 57s, that was it. It has only closed once under the 9 EMA. I suspect this is going to use up some time. Go underneath. I'm not sure because there's still a strong leg C to the upside. Oh, look at that. If there's no high above 80.05 in April, it'll be a peak C. <laughs> so we'll see what happens there. Um, C for C. Um, so that's the semiconductor index. I am completely wrong. If there's a breakout, if there's a close above, even a breakout into the 8170s, I'm sorry, into the 8070s to the 8130s, I have to reconsider everything about the SMHs. Just make it as simple as that. So GT says, oh, it's the Russell Russell that you want to look at, not not bonds, bond yields. So the Russell is stuck. It got entrapped in this downtrend line. It made a peak F top on the first at 140 point. 86. And what's really important about this, <clears throat> it's gone all the way to 132. When you say eight points, what's the big deal? Well, eight points is, in fact, one of the bigger percentage moves to the downside that the um, I, the Russell 2000 has had since the, since the top that was made in 2016 at 125.88 back in, what was that? September? Yeah, September, right down to the October, November uh, November the 4th low, the week of the November the 4th low at 114. So this is that was 11 points. So this is not 11 points yet. It's just sitting quietly <clears throat> near the highs, but showing signals in the daily and the weekly, not the monthly, that this could in fact be 
uh, time and price to the downside. That's what I'm thinking here. But I'm suspecting there will be a retest at some point in the next week or two of the 130.40 level. Wow, that's four points, huh? Yep, that's what I still think. Okay, next question. Uh, so that's the Russell 2000. Um, Bob wants to know about the shocks. Oh, I just did that. Bob, did that. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, spoke about this a while back, saying, I think based on what I'm looking at, NVIDIA might have made a more serious top D at 120.92 on the 7th of February. Comes back down to the 95s. That's a pretty big move, 30, uh, 25 points. Then it rallies quite nicely to the 110 round number higher just a few days ago, pulling back. But it was peak F in the weekly and a leg D and probably and, and a peak E in the monthly. And I'm suggesting to you that Nvidia could in fact get down to the 90, the nine period exponential moving average, if there is continuous weakness for the next two weeks in the general market. That's kind of what I'm looking at. I would have to say that I'm completely wrong about NVIDIA if there's a move in, in April that takes it to the 113, 115 area. I, I just have to say, you know what? It's going to retest the highs. I don't think so. I think this is a hat-trick top, what I call in the Chapman Wave methodology, a hat-trick top when the monthly is about to give a sell signal, but you can't get it unless the weekly is also giving a sell signal, and then the daily has to trigger it. And that daily triggered it. I remember I spoke about it when it, there was news, and then it just had a horrible day on the 10th of February, and then again the 13th. And I said, that is it. I think we've seen a hat trick top because the daily is the rudder, the trigger for the weekly, which is the, is the, the tidal change for the monthly. So monthly is still so far pretty good in the MAC D stochastics, not so good, although it's still at 84%, but it's pulling back. It's the weekly chart that has got an H pattern. I'm going to draw it in, and I'll tell you this, that this pattern is formidable. Once it starts with pure technicals, then there's a real good chance it's going to test the low, and that low will be 95.17. All right, that's NVIDIA. So, yeah, I'm negative. Uh, we'll see if I'm right or wrong. Uh, then all the question was about um, Macy's limited brands. I haven't looked at for a while. LB now limited brands used to be. Um, wow, yeah, my boy, we spoke about this so, so long. I've lost the notation. I, I'm not going to do it right now. But I remember doing doing this and saying, I think I've got a peak D. Let me just check it out. There's a lowest, most obvious low bar. Is that an A? Yep, there's an A. There's a B. There's a C, and there's your D. I remember this, and I said this long-legged candle for L, L brands, and what, what, what were they? Something lingerie, negligee, uh, L B. They 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 took over something or other, or that was their other make. Anyway, that was it, and I said at 101.11, I think that if it takes out the low of this candle of 89.45, you've just got to be real careful. And look at this, look at that give back. That's very, that's bad. Yeah, I'll be back. Dow's at 44 S&P's Unch. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Right, I, I need to thank uh, one of our Danners for reminding me that Coach, C-O-H, which is high-end um, handbags, um, yeah, this is... Any, all the accessories, these are, these are high-end. Um, it's doing quite well. In fact, it just made a, a high in, in the daily at a peak E. And what was the number? At 41.70 on the 30th. And it's been pulling back for three days. The weekly chart made a peak E. But my big concern always is when there is a peak D or E that is underneath the previous high and quite a bit under, it's just saying, you know what? You might be looking okay right now, but you're not showing real strength. You want to be, at, you want to go above that and make a peak. And yeah, you can see, look at this a peak G in the uh, monthly, right there at the week of uh, no, it was March of 2012 at 79.70. Then there was a Chapman wave two bar reversal, and it plummets down to the high 20s, and now it's trading at 39. So this is the same. this is this speaks exactly to the issue that I was saying discretionary income. Um, there's there's a big difference between what people really want, what they can afford, and what they are buying. So okay, so uh, so that's now in, in a short term. I think it's about to go to a short term sell signal. In fact, it's at a sell signal. It's nearly close to a short term sell mode. Um, the weekly chart. I'm going to have to wait a little bit. To give her an assessment. So Sarah wants to know about Tesla. Oh, Tesla. Didn't we just talk about Tesla? Tesla, all-time high yesterday, overbought Musk from South Africa. Yep, from Pretoria. Uh, Google, uh, Chapman Wave Count. So leg E in Tesla. I think Tesla on a short-term basis is getting very overbought. I think it's going to pull back. I think it will fall in the gap. But it's leg D in the weekly, and that says keep Keep an eye on everything here, but leg C in the monthly chart, that says it should still go to a D. <clears throat> so this is what I'm thinking. Tesla is going to be a very good example that if it pulls back together with Amazon, and maybe we'll go to Google right now. I still say Google, I don't know about this alphabet business. Google made, made a peak D uh, back on the 21st of March at 853.50, pulls back to 810, was it? 803. And now it's bounced nicely. But it's within the context of a peak E in the weekly and a potential D. It's the same long-legged doji at a high D um, in the monthly. And that says, watch out, any time in, in April, if there is a close, any week that there's a close below 
803.30, let's call it 800. A close below 800 immediately targets the nine period exponential moving average of 794. So that's for the downside in a Google, uh, which of course is Alphabet. I'm looking at not the GOOG, L, whatever it is, but the GOOG. And it's trading down four at 834. So that's what I'm looking at there. I wanted to do this. I wasn't asked about it, but I'm going to do it right now. Brooke, uh, Berkshire Hathaway made a peak B. Now, this is very unusual. I said I'm looking at chart patterns in, in Berkshire that don't seem to be corresponding to anything, um, anything normal here. So this is really an E slash B at the top right there. And at the time, I said, I'm almost sure I've got some kind of a sell signal. It's, it says B, but I don't believe it. I think that gap up with the next day, slight high, and then a lousy close going into the 2nd of March, 177.86, is saying to me that Berkshire Hathaway is under pressure and it's making lower lows and lower highs and quite a sharp move from that 178 down to the low here of 165. That's one of the bigger moves that it's had in a while in price. Not so much in time. Time it took from 167 down to 158 back in, uh, two, in December ish to January of uh, 2016 to 2017. But I'm keeping my eye on Berkshire. Why? Because I think it's going to participate beautifully. And I've got a leg F slash C in the weekly chart. And I, at the time I said, you know, I think it's a C, but it's acting like an F. Now it says it's really an F. I'm, I'm waiting the full week to make a decision here. But I think that Berkshire Hathaway Enterprises, Buffett's uh, uh, businesses, at 166.94, I'm looking for it to pull back a little bit more. Maybe the 160 level on the nine period exponential moving average is where I would like to be buying Berkshire for subscribers. I think that it's going to be a, a player in 2017 for the next big up move. But I'm waiting in the meantime. So that's where I, I would, six points lower, I'd start to consider. If you're in, in it and you're looking for three positions and you've already got your one, I'd say the next position is the 160 level. And then I have to wait to see where I would add for the final position. But that's really what I'm looking for. Next question is um, um, crude oil. So, okay, crude oil is important. Let's look at crude oil here because I think that crude oil <clears throat> is going to be a tell for a couple of things. First of all, 50.85, This is leg C in the daily. And the tightness and the strength that I'm looking at has a, has a, a cup or a V-shaped pattern. And it's actually quite positive. This is the first time this breakout today above the high of two days ago is the first time that I'm saying that the candle of, I mentioned it before, but only in passing. Now I'm mentioning it, not in passing. I'm saying, hey, this is the candle that you've got to watch. The candle from the 8th of March in crude oil, the high of 53.41, the low of 50.54. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, now we have a chance to see whether the 200 period simple moving average at about 5160 and the 5226 200 period moving average is going to become a magnet. Why? Because 5124 on the 200, the, the nine period moving average on the weekly chart looks like it's just almost there. And the squash that we've got between the stochastic and the MACD is very positive. And that says to me that we should go very quickly to a C. We've just done that. And then take a little time and watch how a D unfolds. And if the stochastic at 89% holds here, crude oil has a very strong base in the 49, 50 to 48, 90 area. And you can even raise the base a little bit more if, in fact, it hits 51, 50 by tomorrow or the next day. So all of a sudden, crude oil is looking way better than I had thought. Um, next question I had, let's see, questions, nope. Let me just move this down. Do I, have, am I missing something? No, I'm not. Um, so Tim, XLF, XLF is, I'm waiting. Now, I need to say I'm waiting. I'm waiting because I think that the XLF has a number of factors going for it to the negative, just on the shorter to intermediate term. The monthly chart is still really strong. Now, how do I explain that? I'm going to go to Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is what I said a long time ago, um, that Goldman Sachs, if it can break into the um, test at 205 to 198 level, that would be, uh, no, whoa, 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 it was two, 
218 to 212 level, I think I'd say. That's where I really would like to look at it. And one of the reasons is that the monthly chart is as the nine period moving average of 215. So somewhere going into that area, that's kind of where I think um, Goldman Sachs would be very attractive. I've still got it only as a leg. Hey, there's no other way I can count it in the monthly. That is incredible. That is suggesting there should be a B, C, and a D. <laughs> I always shake my head and say, I don't know. Let's see what happens. But in the meantime, the weekly chart says, no, there's a little more to go to the downside. It's acting quite nicely on the short term. The MACD is trying to turn up, et cetera. But if I put this together, say, with Bank of America, which is trading uh, down 10 cents after being smacked earlier on for some reason, and a peak E in the daily and a peak E in the weekly, and only a leg C in the monthly. Let me try to put this together. Tim, it's a good question. XLF, I don't know what the actual question was. Let me see. Is it time to short the XLF? If so, where would you put the subs? All right, I'll be back. We'll talk Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to Trade Options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. Hi, folks. So we're looking at CX, which I, I discussed yesterday with Scott, and I said it's making this cup formation. I even drew it in. Of course, I lost that because after the show, I just shut things down. Do there. So what I'm looking at here is that this is a new leg C, and what I said to Scott was, CX could be just chop, chop, chopping around. But if it was able to take out this high of $9.25 made in the 20th of March, that could be really good and it could very quickly go to the next level, which is all those left side highs with the target of $9.51. <clears throat> Don, it's up 33 cents at $9.39. 
and I've got an overlapping wave, Chapman wave overlapping wave in the weekly chart, which says peak A, peak B, G slash B, <clears throat> and under a gray A and a B. And when that takes out the left side high of 951, it creates a really powerful leg C to the upside in the weekly chart, which should go to a D. After the D, there's always, not always, almost always, a test of the left side lip breakout of 951. That'll be. So, oh, this is really good action in CX, which is um, CMAX. This is a Mexican cement company. And we spoke about it yesterday and said maybe they're giving... Maybe they're selling a, a cement to other to American firms, which will be American cement then, huh? Okay, so good. Uh, I bet Scott's training this anyway. Okay, so now before we run out of time, a couple of things I wanted to do. <clears throat> the XLF, it's almost the same thing with XLF, <clears throat> that if there's a, a breakout above this ugly candle of the 21st of March, which has a high of 23.63, if there's a break, a close above it, I have to consider that there's going to be a powerful move that we've corrected already. It's at 2367. I'm not sure it's going to happen at this point. So I think this correction says H pattern, and that will correspond to, say, MS Morgan Stanley. Um, yeah, it's the same thing. They're all doing exactly the same. They need some time. They've had a spectacular move since the November election, spectacular move since the January lows of last year, most of them. I just think XLF consolidating. Um, Yes, you want to be looking to buy it, but let it, I, I just say have, you know, you could start positions now saying it's only a starter position. I'm prepared to have a 10 or even a 15% risk on this because I really want to be buying it lower down. But if it breaks out, at least I'm in it, in it right now. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. Um, all right. So let's do this um, as we're about to wrap up. Let me go to the VIX index. The VIX hit 13. It hit 13.07. Now it's trading at 12.24. <clears throat> as long as the selling pressure in the VIX keeps up so that it cannot hold the 13s, you're going to find that there's a sideways move in the market, a rotational correction that says enough, just a handful of stocks out of the Dow 30, you only need three or four that are making up the difference for the weak ones. And that's really what we're looking at. What is Exxon doing right now? It looked a little ugly. The, uh, uh, yeah, well, so Exxon is up eight cents at eighty two fifteen. If Exxon is able to make that same, I love it when I'm getting for chart formations that repeat in in diverse areas. It just happens so often that you get it. Look, there's that cup formation. We were just looking at it. I can't even remember what we were looking at. There's the cup formation. So all I'm saying is that if Exxon starts to break this low right here of 80.79 from the 27th. That just cancels this p pattern altogether. If instead on Wednesday and Thursday, Exxon starts to rally and gets to the 82.70 from the 82.15 level it's at right now, that'll say, hey, slow move to the upside, very nice. So I, I said that I, before I talk about these as dividend stocks, I need a, just a couple of days. This is the part of the days that I need for Exxon and Chevron to give me that information. Hey, that was an intense day today, a lot of discussion about patterns. Um, let's be, do this again. I'll be back later today with Tom O'Brien for an interview. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Check out my opening call. I hope you'll find it very intriguing and profitable. That's Chapman signing off. See you tomorrow. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.
This is TFNN.